We are beginning by looking at question three from the IB paper of 2019 November. Right, the first principles is something you very much understand. So I'm not going to spend time on it, but I'm going to just write down the result. Um, right, to say f prime of x from first principles can be determined, it is actually f primed of x. The derivative becomes two by minus five, which is minus 10 x plus one. Okay, this is the first principle. Well, this is the result, but yeah, the first principles is lengthier, but you actually get this answer. Now, I want us to use this to get this question. And so otherwise determine the equation of the tangent to f. In other words, determine the equation of the tangent to the graph of f at the point where x equals one for three marks. How do we do this one here? For three marks. How do we do this question for uh, three marks? Okay, that is question three we're doing. Right, so what do we do here? It's very, very easy. Okay, because we're starting now, I'm just gonna give you the kind of sense that um, calculus is doable. So um, the couple of things to find the equation of the tangent, a tangent is a straight line. So if a tangent is a straight line, we use the two formulas. Um, you can use y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1, or we can use y equals mx plus c. Okay, so these are obvious, but I'm just doing them to make sure you have the concept right. We remember from the previous question I've just uh, we've just done we got the answer. It was uh, 10x plus one, which means the first derivative is 10 into one plus one. What is the answer? It is actually exactly. Is it minus 10? That there's minus in front. Yes, there's a minus in front. Minus 10x. Right. So if there's a minus 10. Right, so you'd have therefore here, you can put like a minus 10 plus one, which is minus nine. Just to watch the minus there. So if this is the case, then you get exactly these results. So obviously at this point, uh, this one is the slope. And if this is the slope, what do we do? It passes through, right? So at x equal to one, the function itself is minus five x squared plus x. So I'm copying the right one. All right. In which case, therefore, you're getting you have this, which is minus four. When x is one, y is minus four. Right, so the equation therefore becomes y minus y one, which equals m into x minus x one. Right, at the point, uh, One in minus four, you have x1, y1. The slope is already there. X, y1 is minus four. M into minus nine, which is minus nine x plus nine. Plus four, you move it across. So y is minus nine x plus what? Plus Five. Okay, I was just showing the idea of finding the equation of the tangent, and this becomes the equation of the tangent. So, yeah. Sir? Yes, yes please. So, does the that coordinate there, the one, two, four, is it, what does it represent? Okay, good. What does it represent? The code, the point, this one, 
um, it is uh, the point of tangency. So in other words, so this one is a, a graph. What is the equation of the graph? It is f of x, which is minus 5x squared plus x. It is a quadratic function that is uh, this uh, um, shape. And now there is a part where um, this um, tangent is actually meets, uh, which is called the point of tangency. So at the point of tangency, um, in other words, this tangent meets, meets the graph at the point one and minus four. Um, that is why to find the equation of the tangent, we must use the, the point to find the equation of the tangent because that is where uh, this tangent here uh, touches the curve, okay, and touches the graph. Right, I'm sure you actually make more sense of this question. I just did it because it was mentioning a tangent up uh, there. Okay, right, I'll try to think of this because there are more graphs we're going to look at. Next question. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this uh, yet because it's too easy, maybe. Um, we'll return to some of these. Okay, uh, let me focus on graphs, please. Okay, because the other things are quite interesting. So, uh, right. Right, to continue. Well, I just want to get to my focus on the graphs because there are many things we can like, focus on, but yeah, let's just discipline ourselves a little bit. Let's discipline ourselves a little bit. Um, right, so we have this. Okay, well, this one is also some graph, but yeah, it's not calculus. Right, there are lots of, okay. Seen some of the graphs. Okay, they're after these. Right, okay. Good. Right. Right, you have this. Okay, let's look at question nine. Um, I hope, yeah, all right. And no, I, know, no. I know that we have Ayanda on the line as well. So, um, right, Ayanda is still learning these things as well, as much as, as much as Marang is learning them. Question nine, in the diagram below the graphs of F and G are given, right? So we have a cubic graph is the point of intersection of the graphs. So in other words, here the two graphs is the point of intersection of the two graphs. Right, so F is the point of inflection. Right, so F is the point of inflection. What is the point of inflection? A point what? of inflection, it's where the graph's concavity changes. So you can see that the graph here is concave up and suddenly it becomes concave down and that happens at the point F. And that point is called the point of inflection of the graph of F. The graph of F cuts the x-axis at one half. The graph of F cuts the x-axis at one half. Touches, touches it at x equal to minus three. Here is the graph of F. It touches the x-axis at x equal to minus three. And cuts the y-axis at nine. It cuts the y-axis at nine. Show that these are the values of the A, the B, the C, and the D. Okay, so we have this nice question. Let's just uh, enjoy this question from the IB paper that I actually received from Morang. Right, now we have a couple of things to discuss of this here to look at. How do we find these? So, we need to realize uh, a couple of tips when it comes to uh, these graphs, okay? Because this is question nine of the exam, right? So they come quite, quite towards the end of the paper so you can balance the, the approach to the paper but making sure that you look at both of these. Right, so a couple of things then are very important. So there are two kinds of graphs that are two 
kinds of cubic graphs. But if a cubic graph is like this, it means this one is a repeated root. It's a repeated. It means this one is a repeated root. What is a repeated root? It means that it occurs twice. So when we find the equation, we're going to say uh, the equation of the function f is a into x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3. So now we have f of x. At this point, uh, we have that x is minus 3. So if you want to find this, here we would have x minus, right, so you put the minus 3 there. So if it's x minus 3, then you bring it across, it becomes x plus 3. So you can put x minus into minus 3 like this, it becomes x plus 3. And then x minus into minus 3 like that. And then x minus. So you identify another root. So here you have x equals 1 half and there is minus 3. So here you have exactly that. Which means f of x is uh, a into x plus 3 plus 3. Sir? Yes, please. Why did we use negative 3 twice? Good. Why did you use negative 3 twice? Because um, we always use the point twice because uh, the graph is tangent to that. Because, uh, in other words, it's repeated. So if it's tangent, it means it it is repeated. So it occurs two times. Also, if, if it carried on, it would be negative 3 again or 3. Yes, because uh, they are the graphs are multiple graphs. So if the graph is like this, then it has uh, it has different different roots. But uh, it can also be that the graph is has been drawn in is like this. Okay, it doesn't go through. It actually it, it's the x axis is sort of a, a tangent to the graph. So we're gonna use this point twice and this one once. Okay, so that is just a general rule. Um, right, so obviously because now we can see that doesn't uh, go through here, it just uh, bounces up again. Um, we use uh, the negative three twice and we get exactly this, but the one half, we use it only once. Okay, and we get this. Now to get the rest of this, uh, we then need an extra point. We need one point, um, right? So um, the examiner gave her this point here. And this pointer has the coordinates uh, 0, 9. Right, so obviously we agree that this graph uh, passes uh, through 0, 9. Okay, the 0, 9 point gives us x and y here. So y is 9, so you put 9. Right, so you have 0 here plus three, zero plus three, zero minus that. Okay, so you have nine equals, so what is three by three? It's nine, and you multiply by these. Right, so that becomes minus nine A out of two. We cross multiply now to get the results out of this. And then if we cross multiply, uh, we have that A is equal to, we have that A is equal to negative 2 out of this. Right, if A is negative 2, then you plug it into this. A is negative 2, so you have minus 2 into X plus 3. X plus 3. X minus one half. So you have this. So now um, you have this. What is X by X? 
It's x squared. x by 3 is actually 3x plus 3x, which is 6x plus 9. x minus 1 half. Well. Right, so we just need to expand everything here. Right, without wasting time, if we multiply everything, we get minus 2x cubed. I know you can do this. Minus 11x squared minus 12x plus 9. Okay. Right, you multiply everything here. It takes a, a reasonable amount of effort. So now what we're then getting out of this is the following. Right, so A is minus 2. B is minus 11. C is minus 12, D is 9. So let's check, minus 2, minus 11, minus 12, 9. There it is. So we actually got the answer to this, and this is the answer to the question. Right, um, the small uh, little trick, the small trick was the use of the minus 3 twice. Yeah. The use of the minus three twice. Okay, just uh, so, yes. So so if the minus three was, I mean, if the cubic graph wasn't like, um, I think he said something about it being a tangent. Yeah, or yeah, definitely. So in other words, so this graph has the x-axis as its tangent, because the x-axis is um tangent to the graph at minus three. Then we use the point of tangency twice. But if it was not, if it was going through, like this one here going through, then we're going to use each of the points once. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, all right, we shall see more examples, I'm sure. Right, here's another question. Determine the x-coordinate of f. The x-coordinate of f. Let's find the x-coordinate of f. Right, so the x-coordinate of f, this one here is obvious. It is the point of inflection, so we find the second derivative. Right, so we already know the derivative, the, the, the equation of the function. Right, so we'll, we already know that at this point, uh, um, here you have f of x is equal to minus 2x cubed minus 11x squared minus 12x plus 9. Okay, then we find the first derivative. Okay, because the point f, what is the point f? The point f is a point, is a point of inflection. Right, being a point of inflection means uh, we're going to find uh, the second derivative. Minus 6x squared minus 22x minus 12. Minus 12x. So we have this. And then now, what answer do we get? We equate it to 0. For inflection point. We equate it to zero for inflection point. Right, if you get it to zero, we have minus 12, x is 22. We divide by that 12. Um, divide by two. So this is the answer, yes. So the x coordinate, this is the x coordinate of the point of inflection. So the x coordinate is actually um, exactly minus 11 out of six. Okay, so how to find the point of, yes. Where do you take the six x squared? Can we get to six x squared? To say, where did it go? Where, where did it go? Yes, sir. Okay, good. 
right? It's from the derivative because the derivative now, what is the derivative? So the power rule of differentiation, okay, this, uh, uh, the, what you call the power rule of differentiation, what does the power rule say? It says so y equals x to the n implies that uh, the first derivative dy dx is n x to the n minus one. So that is the power rule. Okay. So if you have this, then this is the power rule. And so now this you bring down n is n x to the n minus one. So now here you bring down three times minus two, which is minus six. Then you subtract one from the three, get it two. Okay. So in the same way, two pi minus 11 is minus 22. Uh, two minus one is a one. We don't write the one, etc. Right. But also uh, for the point of inflection, we must find the second derivative. So we find F double primed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now for the double primed, we say two times minus six is minus 12 X. And this one is minus 22 equals zero which is minus 12 x equals 22. You divide by minus 12. Hmm. Uh, you do simplify 22 and 12 and you get minus 11 out of six. We just had to only get the x coordinate. And this is the x coordinate is x equal to minus 11. And therefore we're done with this question. Okay, but uh, there are more questions on the graphs like this one. Here's another question. This question says that if the gradient at E of the graph of F is eight, determine the coordinates of E for three marks. Where is E if the gradient at the point E of the graph is eight? At the point E, if the gradient at the point E is eight, determine the X uh, the coordinates of E. Okay, it's obvious this one. How do you do this graph question? So, yes, please. So um, I have a quick question about question two. Why did we say um the second why did we equate it to zero? Because yes, why did that's a good y. question? Yes, why did you equate it to zero? Every time when we want to find the, the point of inflection, we equate it to zero. Okay. So Always. even if the y coordinate is not zero. Yeah, is even if the y coordinate is not zero. Uh, we always equate uh, the second derivative uh, to zero. So obviously it is independent of the um um of the y coordinate at the point f. In particular, we can see that the point f is here and clearly its y value is not is not is not zero. Right, um, and even the x value of the point f is not zero. But what we know is that the point f is the point of inflection because the graph was concave up here is beginning, it turns at the point f, it begins being concave down. We, we are actually going to be starting concavity of the graphs very soon of the cubic functions. And, and because of that, um, it therefore means that to get the x coordinate, we get minus 11 out of 6, but we always equate it to 0. Uh, the second derivative, we want to find the point of inflection. Okay, right. So, so to get the to get the y coordinate, would we make x 0? Okay, to get the y coordinate, what do we do to get the y coordinate? Okay, to get the y coordinate, you need to substitute this x value into the original function. Because um, at the point f, for instance, we already know that x is minus 11 out of 6. And then now we need to get what? We need to get um, the y value, but they did not, they said only x, okay? If we had to get the y value, we would, would substitute this x value into the f function, into the original function. And after substituting, we would then be able to get the corresponding um, y value. Okay, so that's just a note there. Right, we continue solving more problems and uh, we look at the next question. What is the next question? Right, so the next question is as follows. 
right? If the graph, if the gradient at the point E of the graph of F is eight, determine the coordinates of E, right? You need to just write down at this point uh, the, um, right? You need to uh, deal with the derivative. Uh, first, let's write down the function. What is the function? Right. Okay, um, right. Okay, so we are here. Right, as I said, uh, now I'm having Senulo on the line as well. So, um, we were saying that if the gradient at point E of the graph of F, um, right, at E of the graph is eight. So we need to first write down the function F, but we already know it's this one. So we're gonna just write it down and say we have minus two X cubed. We have mm -hmm. minus 11 X squared. We have minus 12 X plus nine. Okay, this is the original function. Let's find the gradient at the point E, given the cubic function in calculus. So the gradient of the function is given by what? Right, you find that what is three times minus two? Is minus six X, three minus one is two. Two times minus 11 is minus 22 X. Two minus one is one, minus uh, 12, okay? Right, but what is the gradient? If the gradient at the point E of the graph is eight, the first derivative is the gradient and the gradient is what? Is eight. Now we need to solve for X out of this. How do we solve for X out of this? Right, we show how we solve for X. So to solve for X at this point, we proceed as follows. So we have minus of six X squared minus 22 X. We bring down the eight, it becomes minus 20 equals zero. At this point, uh, we can deal with this. Um, what do we do at this point? We need to solve for X. And to solve for X, I know that uh, it can be done with ease. So what we do here, we can just uh, divide through by um, negative two. Dividing through by negative two, we have uh, three x squared, uh, this becomes plus 11x uh, divided by negative two, it becomes a plus 10 equals zero. And then at this point, uh, we actually are able to um, find uh, the uh, values of x. Right, so what are the, we factorize this, and if we factorize this, it becomes a five here and a two there, you make both of them plus, which means X is minus five over three, or X equals minus two. Okay. So that is what we have then. Okay, these are the X values, possible X values at the point E, but we need to choose now because there are two of them. Which one now is the correct one? Which one is the uh, X coordinate of E? Is it this one or that one? Or both of them, but they are different. Minus five thirds and minus two. Let's look at the graph. Okay, here is the graph. We are asking the question, which one is the X coordinate of the point E? At this point, because this one is minus three, so this one can only be minus two, or it can also be potentially minus five over three. So obviously, which one is the most sensible? What is, okay, so we need to use the, the, the X coordinate here. What is the X coordinate of F? Okay, because now you need to uh, position them well. This one, we got the X coordinate of F. Okay, you need to order them. Okay, that's why the examiner to ask. It's minus 11 out of six, one point something. Minus one point something. So this X coordinate here is minus 11 out of six. What is the X coordinate here? So this can only be minus two. 
Two. Minus two. So if it's minus two, what you do is substitute into the original um, function. So now these are the graphs we're discussing. We're discussing the graphs here. So you need to find f at minus two, which is minus two into minus two cubed, minus 11 into minus two squared, minus 12 into minus two plus nine. Then what is the answer to this? It is exactly five. So when x is minus two, y is what? Um, right, so when x is minus 2, y is 5, and therefore the uh, coordinates of E are these, minus 2 and 5. Okay, if you use a calculator here, minus 2, you put the minus 2 cubed and minus 11, you add everything up, you'll get 5. Okay, which, which means the coordinates of E are minus 2 and 5. But what was the question? If the gradient at the point E of the graph of F is 8, where to first find the gradient? And the gradient here is the first derivative. And now the gradient is eight, meaning the first derivative is eight. We want to find the, the coordinates of the point E. Right, so we solve for X and we get these two values of X. And obviously we have to choose the, the value of X there and we're able to see that um, X is actually uh, minus two um, and five there. Okay, now there is another question on the graphs. If the graph of F, Right, so if the graph of F is a vertical um, asymptote at the minimum stationary point, determine the equation. Okay, C, I'm giving you like two minutes to do C. Um, and then we're going to do the corrections. Oh. Anyone? So now we want to know, here, we want to find the equation of G in the form. What is P and what is Q there? Or what is the answer to this question? Okay, then what is the answer to this question? Anyone? Cellulo and The squad. <laughs> Anyone? We are done, sir. Okay, you're not done yet. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, that's fine. Can you see the question? Can you see the question? Or oh, I need to move the screen. It's fine, sir. Okay. Okay. 
Right. Uh, yeah, you let me know when you're done, please. Okay. Uh huh. All right, let's discuss it quickly. I know that you're smart and you are just there very close to the answer. Right, first things first. They are saying if the graph of f uh, of g, excuse me, has a vertical asymptote at the minimum stationary point of f, determine the equation of g in that form. Right. In other words, um, we have an asymptote, meaning we can be able to get the value of p. So, which means, therefore, we come to this graph here. I can just clean this graph up. Because it's become so untidy now. Let me just remove all this. Okay. And then we expand it. Okay. We are saying the graph of F, um, the graph of G, has a an asymptote through the minimum stationary point. Okay, these are the stationary points, but this one is the max. And this one is the minimum. Mm -hmm. But there is an asymptote through the minimum because it's this one is higher in, in terms of its position. So, which means, therefore, at this point, x equals minus 3. That is that. So, if you are to find the, that equation they want, which is 2 over x plus p plus q. What is the equation? Right, so obviously for the asymptote, then you'd have two. So because it is x equal to minus three, you bring it across and then it becomes x plus three. And then you have plus q. Right, so obviously now you just need to find uh, the value of, the value of, uh, of q but uh, it's very easy to find the value of Q. Um, we choose one point on the graph of G and uh, this point on the graph of G. We have minus two and five here. Right, so obviously at the point E, which is minus two, five. It's uh, the point, so we are done there. We substitute, gives us X and Y this, so y is five and you have two over x is uh, minus two plus three plus q. Right, so we can deal with this, which means the five uh, is equal to, uh, right, uh, this is two plus q, which means q is three, which means y is two <laughs> over x plus three, and Q is three. Okay, then the, this equation and that is the equation. Okay, I, obviously I was just giving a chance to do that. So uh, this becomes sort of the solution to that part of the question. But uh, now at this point, uh, we are looking at the vertical asymptote, um, the vertical asymptote of the graph. And this uh, vertical asymptote cuts through the minimum stationary point there. And the minimum stationary point has the equation the stationary point, as what are stationary points? The stationary points are turning points. And the minimum is this one and the max is that. So we have x equal to minus three. And then obviously if you want to put it at the bottom, you transpose the three and it actually practically, it practically what it becomes is you have x 
plus three equals zero. And that is what you put in the denominator of the function, okay? So we have just shown how to solve this problem and find the required um, the required um, equation of the graph of G. And therefore this one here is the graph of G. This one here is the graph of G. Next question. Next question. Next question. Determine the equation of the axis of symmetry of the graph of G that has a positive gradient. So uh, this is very easy because that means uh, that means that you use uh, y equals okay positive gradient is this one and there's that one with a negative gradient which is minus x plus c but this one is not what the examiner wants they want the one with the positive gradient so we just only focus on this one but it passes through the um the point Okay, because if this is the graph, um, if this is the graph, okay, if this is the graph, okay, I've put it close to the margin too much, but if this is the graph, then you can realize that if x is minus three, then you will have the y. What is the y? Because the that equation is two over x plus three plus what? Um. Is it plus two, this? Let me check this one. Right, so we got that equation. Um, right, we got that equation. Okay, it is plus three. So it's, it's y equals to two over x plus three plus three. Q is three there, so yeah. So now we come here. You can realize that Q is three here. Right, if this is the case, so there's a point of intersection of this. So x is minus three, the asymptotes, the asymptotes here, point of intersection of the asymptotes, of the asymptotes. Right, so you have this. Right, so now you have minus three and three which means it's x, y. So y is three, x is minus three plus c, which means that c is six, which means it is x plus c is six. This becomes the equation um, of the what? Of the um, axis of symmetry with the positive gradient, namely the gradient one, and uh, the one with the negative gradient, they do not ask, but they might ask the negative gradient in the exam, which is gonna have minus one. So that, right, so this one is point of intersection. Point of intersection of? Point of intersection of asymptotes. Point of intersection of asymptotes. This one is the point of intersection of asymptotes. Minus three and three. And this is the equation they want. Okay, let's look at one, one more question on the graphs. Determine the values of x for which f is greater or equal to g in the interval um, from minus infinity to zero. Where is f above g or equal to g from minus infinity to zero. Let's check. F above g or equal to g. F above g or equal to g. All right, obviously at this point, if we say f above g or equal to g. F above g or equal to g. Where is this? Okay, this is F now. But at this point, we can see that like here, F is below G. This is F. 
F is below G. And uh, now we want a part where F is above. Here, F is above G. Okay. Here is G now. Here, F is above G. So F is above G now um, on this side, on the left side of minus 3. But also here, F is above G here. F is above G. So when is F above G? Right, so we analyzed that one together. Right, which means therefore that F is above G from minus infinity um, to minus three because uh, we exclude the minus three because there is an asymptote there. So um, one of the functions is undefined there. Um, right, so, or union, right, union, the other parts, like you have minus two at the point E. Right, so you have uh, minus two, but we must stop at zero. We must stop at x equal to zero on the y-axis. So we're going to stop at zero because up to zero here, the function um is still above there. It's still above so you have that so you have a minus from minus infinity the function f is above so we're looking at parts where the function f is greater or equal to g um right so we can see here that f is above g if it's above g it's above because g is below g is this graph and here it's below right but here g is above f is below here F is above, but it starts being above from minus two, just uh, after minus two, because they're equal here. They're equal at the point E. After minus two, uh, the uh, F is bigger, and then up to the or up to uh, the origin or up to the y-axis, and uh, up to the y-axis we have that uh, um, the function um, um, one of them is actually um, um, at nine. But uh, the function f is at nine, but at that point, the function f is still above the function g. So yeah, what is the answer to f uh, greater or equal to g um, from negative infinity to the y-axis? It is this answer from minus infinity to three, f is above g, but also um, here f is above g there. Okay, so minus infinity to three or that, where we have that. So you have, uh, what is the answer here? We saw that it's minus infinity to minus three. One of the functions uh, is undefined as an asymptote at minus three. So we put an open uh, uh, parenthesis. And then also from the point E, you have minus two up to the y-axis, the function uh, there is still above. So we get that answer there. We get that answer. Next question. Let's look at the shifts. Determine the values of K if the graph of F is shifted so that the new graph, this one, does not intersect the graph of G. Okay. Now, what if the graph of F will remember that the graph of F was determined before? And now we write it down again. What is the graph of F? It is minus 2x cubed. Minus 11x squared. Minus 12x plus 9. Determine the values of k if the graph of F is shifted so that the new graph does not intersect the graph of G. for x greater or equal to zero. Okay, so you must find the value of k if the graph of f is shifted. So we are shifting the graph of f, this one. How do we shift it? We shift it so that the new graph, which is obtained, which is like this, which is h minus k, does not intersect the graph of g. Okay. This is what we exactly get. Okay, so yeah, 
Okay, if you if we lose you, please you join you join the discussion again because we are doing two things. We need to uh, look at the past exams, but also we need to teach the content. That is very important. Right. So what is this? This here is uh, when you want to look at the minus two x cubed minus left to the next squared minus twelve plus nine. This is actually f. So at this point, what this is saying is that h minus k is equal to f. That's what this equation is saying. Which means that the actual function they are looking for is f of x plus k. Which means that the function they are looking for here is the f of x plus k. So it means that you are going to add a certain number k to the function f and produce a new function h. This new function h is such that it does not intersect the graph of g. OK, let's uh, look at the graph the examiner is speaking about. So we need to move either this one. And if you add if you add k, it means you're either moving it upwards or downwards. Let's see. So you're going to need to move the graph of f upwards or downwards. OK, if you, this is the graph, you need to move the graph of f either upwards or downwards um, so that the two graphs uh, do not intersect, do not intersect on the positive side of the x-axis. The question therefore is by how much can you move it either down or up? Okay, what do you think about this question, guys? Anyone? Do you understand the question? So could you please just repeat what you said? Okay, now what they are saying here is you need to move this graph of f. You need to translate the graph of f. It's the cubic function. You need to translate this cubic function either up or down so that it does not touch the graph of g when x is greater or equal to zero. So from here onwards, from the origin onwards to the right, from the origin to the right. The question is, you must find the value of values of k here. I'm uh, just showing the, okay, here, here's the question. Determine the values of k. We need to find the values of k. If the graph of f is shifted, so you need to shift that graph of f. I'm going to go back to the graphs again, okay? But now you need to shift. The graph of f is shifted so that the new graph is uh, h minus what? The new graph is exactly h minus that. The new graph is h minus k, and it is the graph of f. Does not intersect the graph of G, okay? Does not intersect the graph of G for X greater or equal to zero. When X is, 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 is zero or more, the graphs do not intersect. Then you must find the values of K. What are those values of K that do this job? That is what the examiner wants. Maybe. Right. Who does not understand the question? Okay, I know it's it's a story, but to uh, to simplify the question, I said okay. The examiner played a trick because we have two functions in that question, and the functions we have they are f and g, but the examiner is introducing a new function called h. Oh, so, but now this minus two x cubed minus eleven x squared minus twelve plus nineteen plus nine. This is f, so which means in this equation you can put f here, and then you move the k to the other side, so that h is f of x plus k. H is f of x plus what? Plus k. You understand? 
So it means that H is obtained by taking the graph of F and either moving it up or down. Because if you add a number to the graph of F, if the number is positive, it, the, the graph of F is shifted upwards. If you add a negative number, then the graph is shifted downwards by a negative number that is subtracted from the function. Okay. Now, my question is, what is the answer to this question? Obviously, you must look at the graphs. So I'm going back to the graphs now. Sir? Yes. Sir, um, I understand the question, but then the part that gets me is where they say yes. um, um, G for X is bigger or equal to zero. Yes. Now, yeah, G for X is equal to zero. In other words, uh, what does it mean? It means that you must only look at the part of the graph where from the origin to the right. Do not look at the part of the graph or everywhere. Oh. Uh, because now the graph is too much. They know that it's going to be even difficult if you're going to look at even where X is negative. They're saying focus on the positive X from the origin to the right. So I'm going back to the graphs now. We've sort of read the question. Now you must look at the graphs. Here are the graphs. What are the values of K? How do you shift the graph? Do you shift it upwards or downwards? But you must look at only the part from here to there because if you're going to look at the way, then you're going to get confused. Don't look at this part. You only look from X greater equal to zero from here okay. onwards. But obviously you can see that the graph must be moved. You must move it downwards. Because if ever a student can take the graph of f and move it up, this graph of f goes to infinity. So if you move it upwards, there's no way that these graphs cannot intersect. Because the graph of g is not moving, it's only f that is moving. So if you move it up, the graph of is going to still be like this. Okay, let me clean this up. Let me just remove everything here so that it's tidy because it's just too messy already. And you might get confused because now you are, you are just, it's too actually clustered. All right, let me get my pen and go back to the uh, full screen mode. Okay, here is the situation. And we're saying, look at the graph from here to there. In which direction would you move the graph of F, either upwards or downwards? Okay, that's what you need to choose here in that question. It's just a story. But if a student is going to decide to move it upwards, the student is going to have a problem because if you move it upwards, then you're going to have the graph is going to be like this, the graph of F. It's going to go up. But a student who's going to move it downwards it's going to have this. It's going to have this. It's going to have this. So what is the answer to this? What are the values of K? In other words, how many units would you move it down by so that you have that? Okay. So would you? Yeah, because would now you, you move need... it down by nine. Okay, that's that's an interesting question. Okay, if you move it down by nine units, obviously there are many things. You... Okay, if you move it down by it is it is at nine here. It means that by nine units it's going to be like this. Zero, yeah. And then it's going to be like this, something like this. Okay, we don't know here, but we need to calculate. Okay, and then it's gonna be like that. Oh, something so you like move that. it down by the um, the turning uh, point. Yeah, okay, but we, we our measure, if it's nine units, because we know this one, it's nine units oh. above the origin. So we can move it, if we move it nine units, it's gonna be here. But this one is going to still be there. But obviously, mm -hmm. will they intersect on the right? Oh, well, the truth I is, know. they won't intersect on the right. So <laughs> nine units is part of the answer. Because if you move it nine units, then they don't intersect, which is what we want. Okay, the new one, this one, does not intersect that one. 
which is what we want. But what are, what are all the values now? We must find all of them. We must find all the values. So I'm 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 thinking that it has to be the 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 asymptote for G. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. The asymptote for G is giving him your your own point. Okay. So obviously, one thing is we need to know the y-intercept of the graph G here. So we'll have to know the y-intercept for. Um. Right. What is the y-intercept for G? We need to know because this is G, but we want to know here. Okay, because now we're gonna move it to here. Um, by how much, etc. Okay, we need to just do some measurements. So we need to say for G the y-intercept. Right, so to get the y-intercept for G, what is the equation for G? It is 2 over x plus 3 plus 3. Okay, to get the y-intercept, you let y, you let x be 0. And therefore, when x is 0, y is 11 out of 3. Y is 11 out of what? Y is 11 out of 3. So it means, therefore, the y-intercept for G, this one here, is 0 and 11 out of 3. 0 and 11 out of 3. Okay. Now, y-intercept for F, For F, the Y intercept, what is the Y intercept for F? It is this one here, which is zero nine. The question then is we need to just move the graph if you move it down from here to there. Okay, because they intersect, but the, the, move, the minute you move it down, you move it down, you move it down, they still intersect until they intersect here. But slightly below that, then there's no intersection. The last intersection is going to be when it's here. Because when you are moving it down here, it still intersects this side. It still intersects this side. But the minute, uh, the last point of intersection when moving it down is going to be these. Below that, there's no intersection here. So in other words, you must uh, just take these two numbers and subtract them. By how much should you move it down, the graph of F? So in other words, you must say you have 9. You must uh, subtract it. You must subtract 11 out of 3. What is the difference between, what is the difference between these two numbers? What is 3 times 9? It's 27 minus 11 over 3. What is 27 minus 11 over 3? It is 16 out of 3. So you have 16 out of 3. It means, therefore, you must move it down so that they do not intersect. If you move it down by 16 over 3, they intersect. So you must take it um further below that so in other words you need a number that's gonna be such that k is smaller than minus 16 over 3. it must go below the 16 over 3. it must go below 16 over 3. because if you move it only 16 over 3 16 over 3 then it's gonna be here but if, if you move it below 16 over 3 that's what we're saying. We're saying below 16 over 3. But because you are subtracting, you are, you are moving it downwards. If you are moving it downwards, you are subtracting. So the 16 over 3 must be negative. Must be negative. Okay, try to think about this question. It's a little bit tricky, but it is, it is always there in the exam paper. Okay, um, of shifting the graph. Try to make sense of it.
because as I indicated that if you move it by, if you want to find the difference between this nine and, and, and the 11 over three, you move it down by 16 over three units. Then here they intersect this a point of intersection. But if you move it further down to this point, then they don't, um, um, they, they will last intersect. The last point of intersection is going to be here when this move down. But further down, then um, there is no intersection. So you must say you must move it more, more than 16 over 3, so that they don't intersect. How do you say more than 16? You must move it down. To move it down, it means you must, you must consider a negative value of k, the negative values of k. So what is the answer here? Right, so the answer here is that k must be less than minus 16 over 3. Okay. So think about it then, guys. Think about it. Okay, think about it. It's a little bit tricky, but it's always the end of the table. Think about it, but it's always the end of the table. Can you look at other graphs? Can I bring other graphs now? Right, let me bring let me bring other graphs, guys, for us to practice more. Right. Um, let me bring other graphs, please. Right, so I'm gonna bring other graphs. Right. Um, um let me bring okay, I'm bringing more graphs and more graphs. Let me see what graphs I'm bringing. Uh, let me see. Let me see now. Uh, okay. Grade this one. Grade this one. Okay, I think the thing is somewhere else. I'm looking for a file. Just one second. I'm gonna. Is grade twelve. I think it is. It might just be grade twelve only. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's this one. So I'm gonna open this one. All right, let's look at more graphs. Right, there are more graphs um in this uh, material here that I'm opening now. Right, so I have tons and tons of the graphs here. So stay tuned now. We're gonna have more graphs on. Um, okay, somebody suggested we do more graphs. Uh, right, so I can bring another paper. I have another paper, but yeah. Let me just, I'm doing graphs. And then we can do the other things. Let me see. Okay, I'm just uh, looking for the graphs. In this book, it's, it's low, too many pages, but I'm looking for graphs. Because um, uh, because uh, I'm looking for graphs. Okay, here's another graph question. Right, so here's the graph question. I need to confirm, are you, are you able to see the graph question? Is it visible? Yes, yes. sir. Okay, thank you. Right, sketch below is the graph of g of x equal to that one. Um, you have k, uh, k has the coordinates uh, minus one and four is a turning point of g, n is a local minimum, n is a local minimum. So you have a local minimum and a local maximum. Like you saw before, you need to show that p is minus one and q is minus five, All right? So now this is obvious. Um, how do we start? I'm just I'm just trying to engage you guys. Where do we start? How do we show that P is this and Q is that? How? Anyone? Well, these things are gonna come in the exam like this. This this one. The the the, the, the examiners use this material uh, that I'm using here. And this question you can meet you can meet it like this exactly. So if I give you like it's five marks, 
So if I give you this now, what can you do? If this question uh, were to appear in the exam, what would you do and how would you solve it? Anyone? How do you show that P is, is that and Q is that? How? Okay, I want to see your reasoning. Okay, the things I'm teaching today are solid food, please. So please do not hate me and say that I'm, I'm, I'm doing things that are difficult. Um, all right all right all right all right all right Anyone? <laughs> All right. Anyone? This one? I'm having Senulo. Senulo, what do you think? I'm having uh, Marang. Marang, what do you think? I'm having Ayanda. Okay. I should have invited more people, but some people uh, have no electricity in their in their areas. It's low shedding. Okay, anyone? What is the answer? Anyone? Want to show that P is this, obviously, etc. What do we do? What do we do? If you are done, let me know. Okay, if you are done, let me know. Ooh. If you are done, let me know. All right. No one, no one, no one is saying to me they got the answer. The answer is P equal to minus one and Q equal to minus five. My question is who has got those answers? That is my question. Who has got those answers? Who has got those answers? Okay, it's too quiet. Why is everybody quiet? Maybe I'm by myself here. I have, uh, we are four here. So you're so busy with it. Okay, that's fine.
Just put the still bowl in boiling water. Okay. Hey. Right, I don't want us to wait for too long because even the video when you're watching it, I might need to edit it because now there's too much quiet space, you know. There's, there will be too much time when no one was talking. And now when you're watching the video, you'll be like, okay, here, yeah, what's happening? Because no one is talking and everybody's quiet. Okay, Um, it's very easy, guys. This is a metric question. We're going to do lots of these graphs. Obviously, we're going to be limited by time because I wouldn't want to keep you guys for the... Even tomorrow, we need to meet again. Every day. If we don't meet, because tomorrow I'm going to start, I'm going to be online early. From as early as the morning, 9 a.m., I'm going to be online. The whole day, I can just change grade 11, grade 12, grade 11, grade 12, and then I'm going to do grade 7 as well. But I'm going to be online wire wire until night. So, okay, let's do this one. It's very easy. To show that P is minus 1 and Q is minus 5, this is how we do it. This is the function G, and this is the answer. I'm going to write it here on the side. So first things first, we find the derivative because there is a turning point, which is the maximum. This is the maximum and this is the minimum um, stationary point. All right, we deal with the first stationary point, the maximum stationary point. We find the derivative of that, okay? We find the slope. What is the derivative of this? What is the derivative of 3x squared? You bring down the 3. So it becomes a 3x. What is 3 minus 1? It is 2. What is 2 times p? Right, yeah. so we have twice px plus. Now you have the q. The derivative of this one is q. This is the derivative, and now this derivative, you must substitute the turning point, this one here. So at the turning point k with the coordinates minus 1 and 4. You have x and you have y, right? But obviously at the point k, the derivative is zero and x is minus one. So you have three into minus one squared plus two p. I know that Ayanda, this is very advanced for you. Okay, um, because much of this is um, spills to grade 12. I know Ayanda is grade 11, but yeah, you get into see the things. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time on the grade left and things as well um, tomorrow. But if you're going to church, please go to church. Let me know when you're back and then you can join the class. I'm going to be using the same link for the whole day. I'm going to be online. Um, right. So you have this now. You multiply 2p times minus 1. So this is minus 2p here plus 2. And then now this one is 3. But if you bring it across, it becomes Minus three, and this one you can call it equation one. And then we have simultaneous equations to solve because now this point we can use it twice. It's also a point on the um, that is uh, on the function. So at the point k with the coordinate Stop. minus one four, you take the function g. You write it down. What is the function g? It is uh, g of x, which is x cubed plus uh, px squared uh, plus uh, qx plus 1. I'm just copying this. x, y are the coordinates. So y is 4, which is uh, minus 1 cubed uh, plus p into minus 1 squared plus q into minus 1 plus 1. Right. So what is the, okay, there is, a, is, is an answer here. Yeah, okay, right. So I want one-on-one -on -one lesson to help me understand everything better. 
from scratch like we spoke. Okay, that's fine, Senator. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to organize those uh, during the course of the night. Uh, remember, with me, I'm here 24-7. Um, I can organize a class even as the, after midnight, 12 midnight or at 1 a.m. I can always organize the class for two hours, 1 a.m. to to 3 a.m. Uh, right, so it's not um, it's not train smash there. I understand, uh, Tenilo, okay. Right, so mm -hmm. now we have these. So let's manipulate this equation. We have minus one squared. It becomes just a plus P minus Q. And then now you have uh, minus one plus one, which is zero. Which is zero. It's equal to four. And then we have equation two. Okay, if you look at the equation one, so we're gonna focus on this equation here. We're gonna focus on that equation and this equation here. Equation one and equation two. And then we take these two equations to solve them simultaneously. What, do, what can we do with these equations? We can decide to add them up, okay? If you add them up, like if you say one plus two. Okay, if you say one plus two, what is minus two P plus P? It's minus P. And then you have Q minus Q, which is zero. You have four minus three, which is one. This implies that you divide now by minus one, which means P is minus one. You got P. To get Q now, you substitute into any of these, like using using this equation two, using two. You substitute P equal to minus one here, which is minus one minus Q equals four. Q is equal to what? Q is equal to minus five. If you transpose the the, the Q to the other side, the four becomes negative. So yeah, you have we got P equals to minus one and Q equals minus five. And those are the answers there. Okay, so this is what the students had to do. Or this is a typical exam question. Very likely it came from a past paper um, and was put in the navigation pack. So just take note of that. Once again, Ayanda, I'm aware that this is just a bit advanced now because it reaches the grade 12 level. But uh, you are just a few days away from metric. We are counting days now to metric because this is the exam. This uh, is the exam period, final exam period. So now you can even begin doing the metric in December. You can begin the, doing the metric in December. So that by January, you're already <laughs> done with the syllabus. And when the teacher comes to class at your school, you're already revising. Determine the coordinates of n. What are the coordinates of n? Where is n? n is this one. Who can find the coordinates of n? Tell me what the coordinates of n are. Anyone? What are the coordinates of n? n is this one. What are the coordinates of n? Right. For three marks, very easy. That's for three marks. What are the coordinates of N? All right. What are the coordinates of N? Too easy. Right, to find the coordinates of n, it's easy. So I'm going to do 5.2 up here. First, you need to write down and plug in the uh, values of the numerical values of the p and the q. We know that p, p is minus 1 and q is minus 5. Substitute here. So g is going to be exactly x cubed, and the p is minus 1 here. So that's exactly minus x squared. The q is minus 5 which is minus five X plus one. Um, this is what we get here. 
to, to get the coordinates of the coordinates of n, we need to find the derivative of this. The derivative of this, so because it's a turning point. Um, right. So we need to find the, the coordinates of the stationary point. Um, right. Uh, this being a stationary, what is the derivative of this? You bring down three, which means uh, three x, then three minus one is two. Bring down two, which is minus two x. You bring down one here, which is minus five. You equate this derivative to zero at the turning point. And then now you just need to find the factors of this. What are the factors of this? Right, so the factors of this can be easily determined. What are the factors of this? Um, right, the factors of this are x plus one, um, together with 3x minus 5. Which means that x is uh, 5 out of 3. x is minus 1. Okay, so which one is the correct one? x is minus 1 is, is also a coordinate of the turning point. So at this point, x must be 5 thirds. x is 5 over 3 at this turning point. So we found the x coordinate of this turning point, and you can see that it is 5 over 3. Right, so x is 5 out of 3 here, and it is exactly that one. Okay, we had to find the coordinates of, okay. But obviously, the coordinates are easy because coordinates means you must find both x and y. What is the y value at the point n? Anyone? Zero. Okay. Well done. <laughs> right. So we don't, we have nothing to calculate. It's zero already. It's zero already because we're on the um, um, uh, x axis. So, yeah. Um, right. So the coordinates here, uh, the answer would actually be um, five over three together with zero. Right. The next question. Right. The next question is calculate the x value of the point of inflection of G. For two marks. Okay, I'm going to remove some of these to clean up the board. I'm going to remove some of these because this is just too much. Um, right, we already know the answers here. So let me just remove this. Yeah, all this. Right, because otherwise then you actually not be able to see very well. I can even cut this part. Okay, this video is being recorded, so you'll have a chance to watch these things and write them down. Um, all right, so let's um, continue. Right, now at this point, we're interested in, in solving 5.3. Want to get the x value of the point of inflection, right? Like I said before, the point of inflection is obvious. So in 5.3, we start, we plug in P equal to minus one and Q equals minus five, which means G of X equals the P is minus one. So you have exactly X cubed minus X squared and the Q is minus five X plus one. Right, so you have this. The point of inflection, you must find the second derivative the first derivative of this, you bring down the three here. Um, all right, all right, that's fine. Okay, let me just finish this one. Uh, obviously we need to, uh, it's, it's two hours. We're supposed to be here for two hours. And so we are finishing in a few minutes, half past eight, we need to finish. Thanks Marang for obviously notifying me. All right, um, so at this point, you bring down the three, which is three X. What is three minus one? You have two, you bring down two, which is minus two X. Yeah. Here, you bring down, um, Sir. yes, please. Uh, you will send me, then say, uh, no, update me about that. Uh, you. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 definitely. The one on the one, -on -one discussion. Okay, that's fine. I'll update you when I'm free during the course of the night, okay? Okay, so. okay, okay, thanks, Senator. that's fine. <laughs> All right, so look. Right, we find then here we proceed, we find the second derivative, and you bring down the, the, the two, which is two by three, which is 
this x minus the derivative of this is two you equate it to zero for the inflection point and uh, which means that uh, six x is equal to two which means x is two out of six two cos of times into three it goes uh, three times which is one third so now we're interested in the x value of the point of inflection and the x value is actually one out of three one out of three Right. Um, I have Ayanda, and I see that Ayanda is a is a very good student. Much of this, I understand. Ayanda is actually it pitches. I'm doing a bit more advanced things tonight. Um, to also prepare for the, the, the matrix as well. Okay. So, um, uh, obviously, I got you guys mixed up. Um, this evening because I should have had you earlier today, but I understand that you are busy with a couple of things. Right, we need to lastly determine the equation of the tangent to the graph of f at the point where x equals minus two. How do we find the equation of the tangent to the graph of g? So you must find the gradient at this point, right? To find the gradient at this point uh, for the question of 5.3, you start with g of x. So x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus 1. Uh, you get the derivative, which is the gradient, so which means uh, you find uh, g primed of x, uh, which is, we're finishing now, I and, eh? Okay, the derivative, because obviously I know this is new to you, you bring down the 3, you subtract 1, which is 2. You bring down the 2, you subtract 1, which is um, only 1, and then the derivative of this one is of x, uh, x is to the power one, you bring down one, which is minus five, so you subtract any of that. Okay, look, the derivative of these therefore becomes equal to at this point minus two, so you find, yes, please. So you have this, which is three into minus two, you square this, minus two into minus two, minus five, and this derivative is equal to what? This derivative equals, um, yeah, you add everything. So what you do, you minus two squared, you add everything and you get the result. What is the result there? Right, so um, in 5.4, this one. Right, so when you get all these, it becomes 11, this. Right. Um, if it becomes 11, then what is uh, y is actually obtained as g at minus 2. You put minus 2 here. If you put minus 2 in everywhere, wherever there is x, use your calculator, you realize that the answer is minus 1. I wouldn't bore you much with that part. We are finishing now. Okay. So, which means that the equation of the tangent, you use the formula y minus y1, which is m into x minus x1, which means it is y minus uh, y1, which is the same as what? It is this y here, you put uh, minus one. The gradient is uh, 11. x minus x1 is uh, minus two, okay? You substitute, you multiply everything. Minus times minus is plus. And then you have the x plus two, All right? In which case, therefore, you're able to get the answer. What is the answer? Right, so this is actually equal to 11 x. And then now is 22 minus one, which is exactly 21. You want the equation of the tangent, equation of the tangent to the graph, it is 11x plus 21. So the equation of the tangent to the graph is 11x plus 21. So that is the answer. So now if you have that, it's exactly the answer. What is the equation of the tangent in 5.4? So in other words, so this one is the answer to 5.4. This one we're doing here. Okay, it is uh, formed by these parts here, uh, this part and that part. I must thank you guys for joining us. Okay, Ayanda, I'm going to be again online tomorrow morning as early as 
9 a.m. So no problem. Know, yeah, you let me know when you're going to be free. If you're going to be free at 9, you're going to be free at 12, you're going to be free after church at 2. I'm going to be online. So um, just notify me that, okay, I'm free at this time so that you can join the lesson for two hours. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to post this video, guys, in the next couple of minutes. This video contains a lot of uh, things that combine both grade 11 and 12. Um, the calculus is mostly done at grade 12 when we are finding the derivatives, the primes like this. Uh, they're beyond this grade 11 scope, etc. But yeah, um, I'm going to make the video available so that you can watch and take down uh, take note of a few things. But we, I'm going to be available online. Notify me about your availability time tomorrow. I'm not saying to not go to church, please. Go to church, but let me know when you're free. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, Ayanda and everybody. I'll see you guys next time tomorrow morning. Okay. Goodbye. Bye, sir. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Bye.